so uh, first of all uh, there are no words to describe how much i am missing this conference uh, because of some reason i cannot uh, attend this conference uh, in presence but you know i would have really love to be there um, no. <clears throat> but since i am not there now i have to present it virtually so uh, 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 superior antromedial dome impaction is a very burning topic into the scapular um, uh, uh, surgeries so uh, charles catering was the head of research of general motors and you know he has given this uh, very good uh, uh, quote and i love that quote very much a problem well stated is a problem half solved so if you see few of these cases now these are the few cases which are operated early in my life and this is one of the case anterior column anterior wall fracture you can see that uh, this is a fracture of the quadrilateral plate as well uh, was fixed pretty well uh, i was pretty happy at, at the end of the surgery um, this was the reduction again was pretty happy it was a swing plate there was an anterior column fracture you know a, a very feel good factor another case like this if you can see on the left side um, again anterior column posterior transverse fracture Um, again, there is a dome impacted fragment. Uh, not much to be understood at that time. But uh, column reduction was done very well. Again, was happy at the end of the surgery. Uh, third case, if you see just a series of cases which are done earlier, uh, this is again has a dome impaction fracture. I know uh, at the end of the surgery, really the picture looks very good. You know, you are very happy. Yes, uh, we have done a very good job. Restored the joint to normal. But you know what happens in the follow up now. all these fractures if you see the particular common in the npd here is the dome dome impacted fragment here if you see case 1 case 2 case 3 all these cases has that dome impaction fragment and that's what happened at the um, uh, in the follow so this was a pretty decent reduction and at the end of two months you know it got displaced again was a pretty decent reduction at the end of the surgery again got displaced at the end of three months so uh, the, what was a happy picture at the end of the surgery was not so happy at the end of uh you know 2 to 3 months and you know this problem is pretty common and if you uh, see this article jeffrey angelen's article uh, the gull sign of the antromedial dome impaction fragment uh, he said that it's a harbinger of failure and uh, that is how the dome fragment looks just like a seagull wings of the seagull and even after reduction uh, loss of reduction is pretty common that's what he has said that this is a gull sign this patient had inadequate reduction early fixation failure or medial and superior joint narrowing and subluxation and he has said that it is 100% predictive of failure of reduction of fixation so you know whenever gull sign was present you know it, it was almost uh, as if that you know this patient is going to land up in the, uh, in the failure of fixation and many people used to advocate primary thr in this uh, kind of patient and that's what was the message that came out of the jeffrey angelen's paper in 2003 uh, however this is uh, what though it was little bit on pessimistic note that he has written that it's 100% predictive of failure what he has done he has he has done very good in his article he has mentioned two reasons for what is happening that number one that because this area the supramedial location of the fragment is difficult to access and number two that it is difficult or impossible to get any bone graft or hardware applied in this manner so what he has done beautifully for that he has given a problem statement very clear that this area is difficult to access and this area is difficult to support and in case we have to have success in this problem we need to have solution to that and the solution is improve your access to that area and improve your support or input your fixation of that area and that is going to lead you to the success of this uh, in this fragment that will happen over a period of next two decades nowadays uh, gulving sign is not at all an indication for thr and all of us are now trying to fix uh, are fixing it and with a great amount of success So, if you see biomechanics of injury and the pathobiomechanics, anteromedial dome impaction generally occurs in either a central or an anterior vector kind of injury like this, either transverse fracture, key fracture, or an anterior wall or an anterior column with posterior transverse fracture. So, these all anterior um, uh, directed vector injuries, when they fracture, when they uh, impart the load on the anterior part, that is relatively weaker area of the acetabulum, and to when the head goes anteriorly, uh, it just takes some part of the Uh, bone along with it, so that's how the fracture occurs. So now, when the head goes in there, the, the head can go in by two ways. Uh, so first, when the head goes in, suppose the the bone is extremely osteoporotic. You know, uh, you know the net the structure integrity of this cancellous bone is not good, and before the force can be uh, imparted and can be travelled to the inner uh, pelvis, uh, the inner table of the uh, acetabulum or the pelvis. 
this subcondyl bone will give way like that and then it you know when the head will go in and then that that the thing will happen and then then the inner cortical uh, fracture will occur so these are what i call is as a, uh, the type 1 fracture this is not a published so this is a type 1 fracture these are generally low energy uh, trauma elderly the outside cortical injury is pretty less this generally occurs in the anticoagulant with cordial blood fracture or anticoagulant with post ma transfer fracture and most of the time the post injury is undisplaced in situation so situation like this so if you see the inner cortical injury is pretty innocuous how we are look at the ugly looking dome impaction here so the dome is completely impacted completely gone how the cortical injury is looking pretty innocuous uh, another way of doing uh, another way of dome impaction occurring is in a patient with a young and very good quality bone where the when the force uh, act like that and the head goes in it causes and causes the fracture of the posterior column or part of the anterior column and since the force vector continues the head try to goes in and since it uh, while it is going inside the pelvis it will just take a small part of the uh, superior dome and it will still like that so this is what i call as a exit kind of fracture or type 2 kind of fracture where the the, the dome impaction fragment the hinge is pretty much near center as opposed to the type 1 where the hinge was pretty much lateral and here the piece that is uh, impacted is pretty small and generally it occurs in a high energy fracture young patients uh, here the outside cortical injury uh, and displacement much more and generally these fractures occur in t type or a transverse kind of fracture especially like this so you can see that you know there's a very grotesque injury of the uh, the inner table of the acetabulum and you can see that the impacted fragment is pretty small here so it's not as compared to the 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 earlier case example which i have shown where the hinge is occurring laterally here the hinge occurs more more or less at the center of the acetabulum so this is in brief about the patho biomechanics patho mechanics of this type 1 and type 2 of dome impaction fragment it's extremely important to differentiate these two because you know the reduction and the fixation sequence will change depending upon whether it is a type 1 fracture or a type 2 fracture so <clears throat> if we see this uh, seagull fragment and this is the diagram from uh, a paper from china uh, if you see this structure line so all the structure line they are you know confluencing here and just beneath this area will be the um, the um, position of this dome impacted fragment so uh, that's what is the uh, answer to your jeffrey and jones problem number one that you know this area is difficult to access so we have to access, if you have to access to this area then we need to go to this area and you know one of the best approach to answer this uh, to approach this area is this um, the the anterior intrapelvic approach or uh, what is called as the stopa approach which was discussed in the earlier talk but samanta so the access can be by the iliohinguinal iliofemoral more commonly stopa or nowadays uh, in elderly we are using the pararectus approach to access this area so this was the article by scolaro you know in this he has shown that you know uh, one of the way of treating this fracture is you know we can fix the whatever cortical injury just like that especially to the iliohing on or stop approach then you make a small window into the area which we have already discussed to so that just put a tamp like that and you know try to reduce that segment this will hold really true in a type 2 kind of fracture where the, the area is very small and you know the head can stay laterally even when your cortical uh, fixation is done so it will not hold true in a type 1 fracture which we have already discussed uh, this is again an article the same article which we are uh, talking about here the, the author has tried to go through the middle window medial to the fracture uh, medial to the iliac fracture and through that they have tried to reduce the fragment just like that now here they have done first the center so now this is type 2 fracture if you see the hinge is pretty much laterally now till the this fragment is you know put back in place the head is not going to stay lateralized so first uh, thing that you need to do is after lateralization of the head first we have to reduce this fragment butter that area and then we need to do a peripheral fixation so this is what is called as a central to peripheral reduction so this is what we can again through the stopa approach you can see this is through the stopa now this is a bang end on view of this fragment can occur appear to the stopa so uh, if you can see this fragment which my pointer is pointing out this is the dome better fragment this is and you know it is very well accessed right in the front of your eyes by the stopa of the aip approach sometimes we we may have to take ilio femoral or ilio or subinguinal approach for many reasons such as previous abdominal surgeries in that also you know we can take a curved instrument or a, you know a, a, a angle step like instrument and you can go around the fracture side and try to reduce this fragment which was done in this case okay so these are the reduction methods just to recapitulate number one is that 
we need to do lateralization and then we need to do either center to periphery reduction or periphery to center reduction so this is my own example type 2 fracture if you see uh, periphery first we do lateralization then center to periphery reduction just reduce everything back do a center reduction and then peripheral fixation can be done so this is the center to periphery another way which is was described in this article is a peripheral to center kind of reduction so coming to the fixation methods so the two important factors for fixation uh, modalities is the subcondylar support which i want to provide to this area so if you see my earlier um, three cases which i have shown there were some failure it is because though i have just provided the peripheral buttress but there was no subcondylar support in all these three cases so even if you get good reduction if you don't provide subcondylar support they are going to collapse later on so subcondylar support can be provided by either the cancellous bone graft nowadays we are using either bicortical or tricortical iliac fresh bone graft the approach to access to the same incision of the iliac femoral or you can even sometimes use this cement peripheral buttress is in form of the suprapectineal and intrapectineal plate or a, or a kind of plate which was discussed in the last talk so uh, <clears throat> Coming to this, uh, uh, so this article which uh, uh, you uh, have discussed the utility of the screw that is from lateral to medial direction. So after you have reduced it, you can pass a buttress screw like that. So that is one of the method of uh, uh, buttressing this area. You can add a cement to that also, incorporating into the screw. Same screw can be passed from antero uh, superior to posterior inferior direction to buttress that area. And a peripheral uh, buttress, as I had talked, that you know you can use this supra intrapectineal plate or specially designed. for the lateral plate sometimes you can use a hook plate from the iliofemoral approach which was already discussed so this is the case where you we have used the suprapectineal and intrapectineal plate and this is to the aip approach or stop approach where we can see that the supra intrapectineal pectineal plate has been put and the good peripheral uh, buttress has been um, uh, provided so this peripheral buttresses helps you to generate the hydraulic for the graft to stay in place or sometimes you can use hook plate like this in case you are using more of a lateral kind of the approach so some cases so this is one of the case you can see type 1 fracture uh, uh, of the uh, dome impaction uh, anterior wall anterior column fracture um, again was reduced and uh, buttress has been provided with this through uh, type two, another case which is type 2 fracture again impacted fragment reduced and again you can see that the posterior wall fragment and this one buttress through from this through so it's very important that we provide a subcondylar buttress to this area this is a geriatric patient Um, around 83 year old female uh, mother of a doctor you can see a uh, very mild kind of a dome impaction here and the entire hinge is lateral if you see here the entire hinge of the fracture is lateral there is an angle of the dome and you know if we don't realize this fracture pattern you know we can we are calling for failure in the post op plate because the inner uh, injury looks very uh, um, innocuous and we may end uh, we end up conserving this fracture however if we do lateralize this area uh, pack some bone graft put a subcondylar support uh, very good uh, reduction uh, can be obtained this patient went on to unite beautifully uh, we have reduced the uh, the medialization adequate lateralization of obtain and this patient can become uh, go back to their normal this thing and through in true sense we can salvage this it even in a geriatric population uh, of 18 85 years of old um, now another case again type 2 fracture in this case there was a t shaped fracture and again was uh, fixed with this uh, same so uh, the importance of raising this case is the importance of this subcondylar buttress which are not given done in earlier first three cases and which are late to failure so uh, uh, another case which you can see to the aip this fragment can be very well reduced we can put it back put put bone graft and you know put the support and uh, do rest of the job just uh, let me go through the uh, next uh, next few cases because you know this is the repetition of the same thing uh so sometimes we can even uh, do this uh, uh, fixation uh, the the buttress from lateral to medial direction in, in the same thing which i uh, discussed earlier so in case you are not taking a stop approach you can pass a buttress through from lateral to medial direction to support this area and this patient uh, you know once you are done good reduction and good support they uh, end up in good result so take home message in this case is that you know it's very important most very important to identify this entity if we don't identify this entity of course you know uh, that they, they are going to call for failures again it is very important that you know that there are two subtypes it's very important to differentiate between these two the reduction and fixation uh, sequence are going to be different for these two type of fractures stop approach or aip approach gives excellent access to this area subcondylar support is of paramount importance of whatever technique that we are going to use 
and so is the peripheral buttress. Thank you very much for patient hearing. Mm -hmm.